to go up to you, Mr. Costello, and uh, and ask if you can give us a specific example that you'd like to highlight for the listening audience about uh, an area that you've been concentrating on that maybe you have over the fence, getting ready to push over the fence, or planning on pushing over the fence. Sure. It, it, it's a great question. I was actually just thinking about like seeing some of you all on here. And, you know, when you look back at your career, I don't think any of us ever thought we'd like be in these roles. Like, I, so I, I know we got some, some military here. Like I was not that, that great troop after high school. Like I, I joined because it was like the only option and it was, the Air Force was the best thing ever for me. Uh, and then I, I had exactly, thank you, general. Uh, and then I had, a. Uh, you know, great leaders, Luke, I worked for you as a junior troop for a while. Uh, when I came back to DHS, I knew I was going to, I knew I was uh, taking over an organization that had some issues. It was underfunded. It had morale issues, uh, had gone through uh, about a decade long of being, you, you know, you're not a good organization, but, you know, not what was hard to take it over. And honestly, as you know, my first year was Pretty darn tough, and a, and a lot of technical debt. On a top. lot, a lot of technical debt, uh, and a lot of debt just in general. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm seeing now is like it's taken. I knew when I came back, I would be here three to five years. That that was kind of like my game plan. And as you know, I commute back and forth from New York City because I have like the best partner in the world who puts up with uh, my craziness. We are now seeing all the things we built come together. So last Friday. Uh, you know, vulnerability popped. We're probably several of us dealing with it on on a certain certain product line. I had it integrated in a system we had just taken over one October. We have been preparing to kind of move off this tech stack and go through it. Well, the mitigation, the second we put it in place, the whole application like un unworkable, can't do this. So I, you know, I was sitting with my deputy and we're we're going back and forth and and I'm very fortunate to have a deputy that you can have those hard conversations with and he'll, you know, give it back and forth. And, uh, you know, we've worked together for a long time and I'm like, I'm making the call, migrate it to the new solution this weekend. I hate to do it, but, but we got to do it. It was the only decision that was a path to getting us to a better place. Boy, was I worried about making that decision. Uh, what we got out of it, we're in a better place today. Sure. We still troubleshooting issues and, having things go on, absolutely. But what we saw is this team that we've built over the last two years, coalesced together, worked together, solved a problem together, uh, and delivered a solution for the operators uh, and our stakeholders that, that use this system uh, in the SLTT community. This whole year from like now through the end of December is our massive migration. We are moving all these systems to things that we've built over the last two years you know, ground up, we've started really pure here. We're migrating to Microsoft Entra. There's no legacy Active Directory that we're migrating into. Uh, new cloud environments. Uh, it's really hard and you have to make these really difficult decisions. Uh, and it's also hard on your people. Like that's the hardest thing. I'm asking a very small team of people to migrate 10,000 direct users that we have that'll be now using our systems. Still small agency between our federal and, and uh, partner community and the, the contractor workforce, you know, eight to 10,000 10, users isn't big, nothing like we dealt with at CBP. But when you've never done it before, it, it's really hard. And when I was looking back on this, I'm like, well, thank goodness I had all these people that taught me that you never stop working hard. So when, you, you know, the type of leader you have to be when you're leading a technical organization through these is, you know what, you get a phone call on the weekend and uh, I don't know your 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 boss's printer is out of toner cartridge. Well, you're you if you can't find anyone else, you're driving in there and you're changing the printer. Uh, and and that's the organization I'm trying to build. So this whole next year, you'll probably see less of me on on programs like this because we're going to be working harder than this office ever has to get CISA an operating environment that it needs to be an operational component effectively on the IT front at DHS. And also ensure that that we can interact with our mission partners, whether it's in DoD, the Intel community, elsewhere. Uh, it's really hard. I liken ourselves, uh, Luke, to when I joined your office in 2008. We're about five years in it, CISA. 
we were still dealing, remember the legacy INS, the border patrol systems and everything. That's what I have right now. At the end of this year, we will have a full operational unclassified IT environment for CISA. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing this year. Small but mighty 